Hello and uh, welcome to Press TV's Top 5. I'm Marcy Hashemi. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, the United States and Iran say hard work is needed to hammer out a comprehensive deal on Tehran's nuclear program. We're hopeful. Uh, we have a lot of hard work to do. Uh, with some very tough issues. Uh, I think we all look forward to getting down to the final uh, effort here to see whether or not it is possible. I think, uh, I think uh, everybody would like to see an agreement, uh, but uh, we have to work through some difficult issues. Well, I agree. I mean, maybe not on the issues, but on the fact that we need to work really hard in order to be able to uh, make progress and uh, move forward. Uh, we're determined to uh, do everything we can in order to be able to make this important milestone. But that depends on a lot of things, and we're going to work on them and find out. Thank you, everybody. Well, the two top diplomats made the remarks at the beginning of their discussions in Vienna. Zadif earlier said he's looking to clinch a deal that covers the interests and rights of the Iranian nation. He stressed that a deal is possible if the other side avoids excessive demands and abides by its commitments. Zadif and French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius are now meeting. Upon arriving in Vienna, the French officials said the P5 plus 1 and Iran still need to fulfill three conditions to reach a comprehensive deal. What we want is a robust deal that recognizes Iran's right to civil nuclear power but guarantees that Iran gives up definitively the nuclear weapon. For this reason, there are three indispensable conditions. A lasting limitation of Iran's research and development capacity, a rigorous inspection of sites, including military if needed, and the third condition is the automatic return of sanctions in case it violates its commitments. Well, the British and German foreign ministers, as well as the EU foreign policy chief, Federica Mogherini, are expected to join the talk soon. The negotiations are based on mutual understanding reached between Iran and the five permanent members of the UN Security Council plus Germany in Lausanne in April. The two sides have until the end of June to reach a comprehensive final agreement. We're going to cross over to Vienna, joined by our very own Homa Lisky. Homa, good to see you. Homa, fill us in on uh, what's taking place today. To hear from you again, Marzia, I'll start by saying that, as you mentioned there, as we speak now, a meeting is taking place between the Iranian foreign minister alongside his deputies, uh, Mrs. Arif, Mrs. Arafshi, and Ravon Chi, with the French side represented by Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius. And uh, before this meeting took place, you just mentioned there the comments made by the French foreign minister. He uh, repeated those uh, claims or that statement basically earlier, just a few days earlier in Luxembourg, the three conditions that he outlined and I think uh, a lot of what he says points to the issues that are causing the differences as these negotiations are underway uh, we are hearing that the German and British foreign ministers as well as the EU's foreign policy chief uh, Federica Mogherini will be in Vienna probably here tomorrow when these negotiations are going to continue the deadline is the 30th of June however it seems that the sides are going to extend the talks a few days beyond that this is the expectation here at least among both the analysts and and uh, the journalists, so what we're hearing, Mr. Zadi also said uh, in remarks upon his arrival to Vienna that uh, it is important for Iran to have a good agreement. Time is not important. What's important is to make an agreement that is good. He said that is within reach only if the sides remain committed to the Lausanne agreement. Now, some may be asking, this is a, a demand that's been, being made by both sides. So both the P5 plus 1 is saying that Iran should remain committed and Iran making the same claim about the P5 plus 1. What uh, Mr. Zarif says is that based on the Lausanne text, and everyone can go and read it, it is available online, uh, the sides have agreed for the United Nations Security Council, EU and US sanctions to be terminated or removed as soon as a, a deal is made and is implemented. And this is based on a step-by-step -step approach. Now, the question that I was putting to Mrs. Zarif is when you say that the sanctions should be removed immediately, does this mean when a deal is signed or does it mean when it's implemented or verified by the IAEA? And his response was, this is a possible 
when there is simultaneous and reciprocal action from both sides. So mm. my assumption, Mazda, is this is going to be a very uh, elaborate step-by-step -step approach and all the details are going to be written down in the comprehensive uh, joint plan of action, the text that's being worked on now. So each step that Iran takes, another step will be taken by the other side. And Homo, was there any other uh, comments made uh, or talked about about the whole military inspections? Because we know that, that was also a very sensitive subject um, for the Iranian side, saying that they would not allow anything mentioned about that today. Exactly. I think what's important in this respect is just the, as these negotiations are taking place, we saw the IAEA Director General Yokio Amano joining the negotiations. He apparently had a meeting with uh, Laurent Fabius and John Kerry. He's expected to meet the other members uh, of the E3 plus 3 as well probably tomorrow. And this, I suspect, is about the, how Iran is going to cooperate with the IAEA when it comes to an increased verification regime. I can say here that when I was in Luxembourg just a few days back and I asked the question about military inspections or inspections of Iran's military sites, Mr. Zarif said that Iran's military facilities and sites are not fair game. Also today he made it clear that Iran will not accept, and I'm quoting here, exceptional procedures. It believes that there are uh, rule-based, uh, you know, um, establishments for this verification and it's going and there shouldn't be discrimination he said when it comes to the case of Iran Iran is open to verification but nothing that should, should, would be viewed as exceptional for Iran or nothing that would uh, basically reveal for the other side Iran's military secrets all right thanks so much for being with us our very own Homa Lizgi reporting in Vienna and now we're going to cross over to California and uh, continue this discussion on the P5 plus one talks with Iran with political analyst Mr. Nader Bakersadeh. Thank you so much for being with us. Good to have you. Uh, when we look at the situation, are, are you optimistic uh, with uh, what is taking place right now? We know that the original date is June 30th. Uh, first of all, are you optimistic that a deal is going to be reached this time around? Well, if you listen to what the officials are saying, there are major differences. Mr. Fox is talking about limiting R&D. Whatever was mentioned in Lausanne is what's available for discussion, but beyond that, probably not acceptable to Iran. Regarding uh, inspections of military sites, um, it, it is part of the additional protocol. They are right that they can request to see anywhere they want to go, but they can request not to go any time. You request it. If the information is not provided that is satisfactory to the agency, then they can go to the next level. That is normal. They should do. But going there, knocking on the door and walking in, that is unacceptable. And the inspections and the sanctions, of course, is something that uh, Dr. Zarif has mentioned. I have a feeling that when they sign, some of those steps have to be done step by step, as your reporter said, because you cannot dismantle all the centrifuges uh, all at the same day that you're signing. You have to do it step by step. So those are the three main issues that Mr. Fabio said. And they're going to stay the, the three main issues for the remaining portions of these talks. And as you said, it's not just the differences that exist, but in many cases, it seems that there is quite a gap. I'm just wondering, do you think that this time around, because we've, we've seen already hints of possibly um, the June 30th, 30th that deadline being extended. How likely do you think that we could go into a longer extension period, um, perhaps months? Or do you think that's a possibility? I, I would think that both sides want to this to close as rapidly as possible. I was thinking that Mr. Obama has had two very good news items this past few days. He wants to add this other additional one as part of the success in foreign policy, probably the biggest success story of his presidency. He wants this, his team wants this, and uh, I would think that uh, they want to make sure that this closes as soon as possible before the U.S. Congress starts drifting towards more sanctions or, or additional uh, new laws against this case. Thank you so much for being with us. Political analyst Mr. Nader Bakar Zadeh out of California.